Dim Lights and Stiff Drinks, the dive bars of Seattle, is proud to be sponsored by the Stedman Group. The Stedman Group is a local independent business that owns and operates Targi's Tavern, profiled here in Season 1, Episode 9, The Pogi, Season 2, Episode 12, The Duval Tavern in Duval, and Larry's Tavern in West Seattle. All of us here at the podcast are pretty tough critics when it comes to how the local dive bars are being run, and we have always been extremely impressed with all the dive bars owned by the Stedmans. This is because all drinking establishments, especially those that have been around for a while, each have their own unique character and charm, and it's obvious when you walk into a Stedman's bar that you are devoted to maintaining that tradition. And for that, we raise our glasses and cheers. The Stedman Group, committed to preserving the legacy of dive bars throughout the Puget Sound region. Noted. Three. Three. Taking it up and You used to give a shit about that if we said too many hellos. Now look, you're saying it. Three. Yeah, that's what Three. I mean. Yeah. This is Dim Lights and Dim Drinks, the dive bars of Seattle. Podcast dingy taverns, backroom alleys, big roadhouses, and dive bars of the greater Seattle area. We explore the scene, history, and salacious backstories of timeless drinking okay. establishments along with them. You know, sampling what's on tap and swapping some tall tales. We hang out in the places where sorrows are drowned and future regrets are made, so you don't have to. But, um, we don't just talk about some awesome dive bar in the confines of some of the 40 studio. No, no, no. No, we do not. <laughs> no. You might hear the speaker we're underneath tonight. Yeah, it's Playing legit. Old school we, we have evidence. Yep. We have evidence. You can be live directly from Seattle's greatest water holes. With me, as always, is uh, the Dim Lights crew, uh, Bob, producer extraordinaire. Hey, now. Noted historian and celebrated author, Brad Mustache Panda. Hello, everybody. And my name oh, is yeah. Sweet Lou. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. <laughs> you guys have been, uh, it's almost like the season was designed so that Lou wouldn't get any air miles. Like, four or five bars have been walking distance from my house this year. I gotta thank you guys for that. Yeah, we've, we've done a lot in this no local area. No <laughs> I've noticed that. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm MC Tumble. And, Tumble on uh, in. Before we get into the details, we'll tell everybody where we're at. We are at the Tin Hat in Ballard slash Finney Ridge. And we're gonna get into that uh, as well. Sounds like it's up for debate, maybe. Point, Lou, uh, kind of a, this neighborhood is a previous haunt of a lot of us. Fairly, fairly close to where we're That's right. Well, has anyone here been to the hat before? Have I have not. Jack? No. Is it yeah. yeah. One, oh, okay. one time, many years ago, uh, after a handful of mushrooms, and my buddy Dylan, he was living next door at the Josephine, and that was a cool little underground music venue, and uh, had a little fun, stumbled over here, played some pinball, and then... Realized when I went to go back to Dylan's house, I was locked out. I didn't have my cell phone on me at the time, or oh, no. he had something wrong, so I had to call another buddy from out of town. This was before Uber, and my buddy had to come pick me up. He lived over by Daryl's, and then he picked me up and drove me back home to West Seattle. Cause Not I was, what you want to be dealing with when you're. Uh, I was incapacitated. Yeah. So shout out to Wes and shout out to Daryl. Yeah. So that was a couple years ago. That story took a <laughs> yeah, it's fucking awesome. And it had a happy ending. <laughs> it did. Yeah. Everybody got home safe. <laughs> Later, a few beers were, were swapped and some dollars, maybe. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, like I said, we were at the Tin Hat. Uh, we got some stories to tell about the Tin Hat. Maybe some stories to tell about uh, other related neighborhood bars and so forth. But Brad, you want to maybe give us a little bit of history of the Tin Hat? Yeah, absolutely. Um, 1910, so, it was the garage. Yeah, 19 in the 1910s, it was known as the West Woodland Garage. And it opened as a drinking establishment known as the Canteen in 1934. And I love the Canteen because you don't have to have a, a word after it to quantify what it is. You don't have to <laughs> call it the Canteen Tavern or the Canteen Beer Parlor. The Canteen, that just says it all. Canteen or the Spittoon. <laughs> yeah. No, no other qualifications needed. No. Nope. Yeah. No. Nope. However, do you guys know why it was called the canteen? I would imagine it has something to do with drinking liquids. You could that was only, part of it. You could that only drink if you drank out of a literal canteen, like an army canteen. That's oh, a good guess, but no. 
Okay, I'm going with, uh, it was literal, it's where the GIs went to refill their canteens with pure, filtered, delicious Seattle water. You're Very about smart, as close J-Dog. as like, yeah. anybody's got. Yeah, right. I like that. You're kinda. You're a thinking man. So here's, here's why it was called the canteen. So the American Legion was formed after World War I as a kind of fraternal organization for war veterans. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like a lot of them, the American Legion has posts, like their their clubhouses, their Eagles halls where they meet. Yeah, like an Eagles Hall. And um, they have posts, you know, all over the country, just like all these other fraternal organizations. And many of the American Legion posts also have adjoining bars known as canteens. Oh. Because canteen was a common term like on military bases like yeah let's military go grab a jargon the canteen that was yeah so and that's so why they it called was it kind of like um um like a member's bar so it wasn't that's exactly the so this this building right here was the american legion clubhouse and where we're at right now was their original bar now now is this an officer's club well, that's what, I'm going to get into that. So, oh, nice. No officers allowed. It was the officers. <laughs> the officers went to the nice yeah, one it's down just the veterans, regardless of rank. Private, it was for veterans. Class one and class two only. <laughs> yeah. Now, not all American Legion posts have bars, but many American Legion posts do. Like the the majority of them do. Anyone where it is. Yeah, and generally the American Legion posts that do have bars use them as to as a way to generate revenue for the club. You know, a big money maker. And yep. also, it's a perfect social gathering spot, right? It, it also seems like a damn good excuse to go drink for free or two. And I'm sure a lot of that happens. I'm and sure everybody knows happens. everybody there. And everybody knows everybody. Cheers, Everyone's bar. buddies. Uh, now, when they first started, you had to be a member in order to be allowed inside. And they were really strict about it. But starting in the 1970s, 80s, the American Legion started losing membership. They weren't as popular as they were before, but you know, like how they were back in the 50s. So they loosened up the, the regulations a little bit, and they started allowing non-members in. Opened up the books. Downfall yeah. of the mob. You gotta wonder, like, when that transition is happening, it, there's gonna be a phase where they were like, you're a member, right? Wink, wink. Yeah, yeah, I just forgot my membership card. They're like, oh, okay, cool. It, you know, next time, maybe show me your card. Yeah. Yeah, it makes yeah, it, I wonder about it. You think they wouldn't right? have been able oh, to get yeah. away with it because everybody knows everybody. Like, who the hell's that guy? Yeah. Um, forgot my card? <laughs> no, you didn't. Get the hell out of <laughs> yeah. here. I got your card. What about right the here. other fraternal organizations, though, like the Kiwanas and the Lions? Like, are they. I know they're still around, but they're going to die out soon, right? I don't because know. the Shriners? I know an active member. Uh, Shriner, what do you have to be a Mason? Yeah. Are the Masons and the Shriners... You, before, if, if you're a Shriner, you have to be a high-level Mason before you can even think about being a Shriner. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. All Shriners are Masons? Yes. I they're, didn't know they're that. All, they're all on the plane. Yeah. Huh. On the plane? Yeah, that's Mason jargon. But, like, two officers can't be on the same plane at the same time. Oh, what? Are those mushrooms kicking in again? Jeremy, you're tripping me out. <laughs> But the Shriners and the Masons, they're kind of like, I don't consider them the same as like the Kiwanas and the Lions. Like, oh, the, you're gonna get so much hate mail. What about, what about, you guys, like, what about the my Eagles? stepdad was a Kiwana, and I went to a couple meetings with him, and it was nothing like the Masons. They didn't have hats or weird oh, symbols or. I would say I don't, that I don't was wanna, pretty boring, actually. No hat. Yeah. I have, I have a buddy of mine who's a, a upstanding member of the White Center Eagles fraternal organization, and he's. Do they have hats? Uh, no, just rally hats. So you think they're still going strong? Yeah. Yeah? I what mean, about the Lions? I would say they're not going strong. I would say it's, uh, it's the, yeah, it's going the way of the movie theater. You know, so a couple people are hanging on a for old times, so, but I think it's not going to be around Because in my longer. mind, I just picture a lot of, oh. like, old people. S- yeah, old people. Yes. A lot of 70-plus members, but not a lot of 30, 40, 50-somethings. No. Or, yeah, or younger. You're right, you're right. You mentioned, like, the movie theater. Good analogy. Like, are, are these kind of... Uh, Fraternal orders and lodges and houses and membership things, they're gonna make a resurgence. Are they gonna come back? Possibly. I maybe. You know, yeah, like you, everything comes around again. Everyone comes so, around again. Yeah, yeah, maybe. That might be the hip thing. Well, I don't wanna one up everybody here, but I was the president of the university chapter of the Kiwanis. Were you? So you should ask me. We, we are sitting yes. sharing this table with a I did not make it up. Yeah, so that's kind of different. I was raised with the Kiwanis. What so. you're talking Why about. Why are we just now hearing about this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Did you guys have a, a secret handshake? Anything? I always knew there was something funny about you. <laughs> <laughs> Secret handshakes, robes, <laughs> spankings <laughs> for the like, freshmen. Yeah, like candlelit rooms. Just about Kiwana stories. <laughs> well, no, Kiwana, and I want to say this because I don't want them to be Clear dragged into this mud, is totally different. It's just a fundraising organization to help the children of the world. Yeah. So each chapter just but, but raises money hats. and gives it away to the local charities that we choose. Yeah. No so, hats? No hats. No. That's what I mean. The no hats, no clubhouse. We They're once a the month, we like go the over the budget. budget. Exactly. We, so no yeah. clubhouse means no bar. Run yeah. fundraisers, that kind of so stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's fundraising. All right. Not I don't as know cool as the Lions, and though, and the American Legion well, that are partying their asses off at the gym. Well, fundraising doesn't mean I you can't have I should have joined them. Or something. Well, who? Are, which? What is the one that has that goes in the parades with the little mini cars and they Shriners. drive around? That's the Shriners with the okay. Fez. Yeah. yeah, that's the only. That's one the only that... reason I would join. To be able to do that. <laughs> I want to yeah. wear the Fez. Yeah. It's the only one I ever wanted to join. I'm <laughs> looking for an excuse to take it out of the road. Nice. Let's rock. <laughs> Sounds like the car's full. All right. Anyway, so yeah. So this place was the canteen, and that's why it was the canteen. It was the American Legion Bar. Cool. And it was the American Legion Bar from 1934 when they opened until 1946 when it was sold, at which point it became the Tin Hat Tavern. What, but for, or the, the, excuse before me, the Tin Room. 46, before it was the Tin Hat, was it the Legion Bar that was open to anybody and everybody? No, it was closed. Oh. It was closed because during those years, from 1934 to 46. They were really strict about it, especially like during World War II and stuff. You you had to be a vet, you had to be a member, yeah. As it should be. They they ran a tight ship back then, yeah. so you wouldn't have been able to get in. I could see the gears turning in your head right now. Like how how would I have been able to sneak in? Yeah. <laughs> Would you have been able to go with your Navy background? Could you clock in here? Uh, Air Force. I was Air Force. Oh, Air Force. Sorry, you were Air yeah. Force. Yeah. I could, I guess. I, I probably... Wait, wait, wait. You were the Air Force? <laughs> Listeners learning all kinds of things tonight. Lee's yeah, a Kalanian. Brad's a pilot yeah. in the Air no, I Force. I wasn't a pilot. I wasn't a pilot. And yeah. I, I have three nipples. <laughs> we knew that. Yeah, you did. <laughs> it was a canteen until 46, Don't and then it was dare. sold and became the Tin Hat Tavern. So it's been the Tin Hat since 46, so what is that, like 78 years, almost 80 years? Long mm -hmm. run. It's been the Tin Hat. Now, once it became the Tin Hat, it was no longer a veterans club. It was no longer, you know, kind of squeaky clean. So we got a couple crime stories after it became the Tin Hat. So yeah. cue the music. First thing of note is it was one of the bars that was raided in that big punch board raid of 1948. Oh, and we just talked about yeah, this. Yeah, like maybe the fifth bar. That it, it was actually this was the fifth bar we've been to was that was part of that raid. Yeah. It was the Blue Moon. It was the Duchess. Duchess, I remember. It was maybe it was Lenny's, or was it Al's? I think it might have been Al's. Al's. Yeah. Al's. Yes. I think it was Al's, yep. and then this place when it, after it became the Tin Hat. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. So yeah, they got busted. They got popped for illegal punch boards, just like about a hundred other taverns we that only night. Only go to convicted felon dive bars. Yeah, that's right. Oh, only the best. Yeah. Only the finest convicted felon. And speaking, so this is another blast from the past. Do you guys remember when we were at the Little Red Hen Tavern? And I told you the crime story about the uh, short bandit. The guy, he was uh, five Give foot us a six. Refresher. Okay, so in 1994, a short statured bandit, he was approximately five six, held up a string of taverns, including the Fifth Avenue Tavern, the Little Red Hen, and the Tin Hat. He was working the neighborhood. He was working the neighborhood, and so his MO, so he would walk into the tavern wearing a Red Devil face mask holding a revolver and demand everything in the cash register. That's scary, then he man. would flee and drive away in a compact car. I don't know the make and model, but it was like, so like that added Fiat. to his like short bandit. A clown car, if you will. Name, right? Yeah. He was this. Maybe a Shriner car? Callback. This just took an interesting turn, yeah. yeah. He sounds like an adorable armed robber. <laughs> yeah, right? 
But that added, like, the fact that he was a short little dude driving kind of like a compact car. That just added to his name, the Short Bandit. Especially at a time when no one had compact cars. Yeah. <laughs> Before it was that, cool. Stood out next to all the Lincolns <laughs> yeah. and LTDs. Now, he actually also held up a tavern in Everett. And when he was fleeing, somebody was coming in just as he was fleeing and taking off his devil mask. And so he shot the guy, I guess, to, like... Because there was a witness. witness. So he shot and killed a guy in Everett. Ooh. And he's never been caught. The short bandit's still at large. That compact car still now, cruising. Now, here's the thing day. about... So when he went to rob the tin hat here in 94, he came in, and I guess everyone busted out laughing because they thought it was a joke. <laughs> this little short guy comes in with a devil mask. So everyone busted out laughing, and they thought he had a toy gun. And, and so no one was off. taking him seriously. So he wasn't successfully able to hold up this place he basically got laughed out and he kind of like yes. ran out after frustration because no one was taking him serious <laughs> makes yeah. sense because you got to be so tense going into a spot like that and everyone laughs and you're like, oh it's pro who is that is that fucking richie under there <laughs> fuck you and everyone turns around yeah. and starts drinking you're like um okay <laughs> that's kind of what happened so he ended up just leaving without any money from this place so but this also, was maybe his i love the tin hat all the more now Another so, dim lights, uh, <laughs> dim lights lesson we like to pass on to our owner friends is that if uh, someone comes in to rob your bar, just ignore them. When, Laugh when, at them first and then ignore them. Yeah. Power move. Power move. <laughs> yeah. Like he came in, the short little guy, and they were laughing. That's adorable. <laughs> Trying to pinch his cheek. Let's take a selfie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can I take a selfie? <laughs> 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 He's a pretty tall bar here, too, so maybe one of the bartenders didn't see him. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, down here, lady. <laughs> but that's everything pretty much noteworthy as far as the history of this place. So, it's yeah, it's been operating for almost 80 years. And inside is just, i got to point out, they have some amazing vintage Olympia and Rainier, among many other uh, cool stuff, beer signs. The Oli one right above us yeah. is um, amazing. And that's another Oli one right over there. Those are from the 70s. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. and we got a... Um, El Corazon over here. Or, um... Yeah, we got some wood carved paintings. We got some blue, some uh, black velvet paintings. Uh, they got a big, huge portrait of Mother Teresa wearing a Wonder Woman uh, <laughs> headband, which I thought was pretty cool. Nice. We got a guy right above us wearing a scarf, smoking a cigarette. Looks so, like a bandito who, in an yeah, old Jeremy western or something. and I were having a debate about this particular painting. Who do you think that is in the painting? I, I, I Charlie thought... Bronson. Yes, Charles exactly. Bronson. Good that's, call. that's what I said. I said, that looks like Charles Bronson. I don't think so. I see Charlie Bronson yeah. there. Oh, we definitely need to post uh, this on the socials and get it to make Yeah. James Brolin? Yeah. Oh, maybe. I'm more like along those lines. That's where I, I, I see I, more of that. Yeah, I can see that, though. Yeah. The first time, yeah. Huh. Either yeah, way, well, it looks like he's going to kick your well, ass either the, way. Who's the guy who plays Machete? Oh, uh, um... Yeah. Danny Trejo? Yeah, Danny, Danny Trejo. Trejo. Yeah, yeah a little bit no, of Danny Trejo. Trejo. Not that. Yeah, a young, not that. Yeah. Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo's mustache yeah. goes down. This guy has the, the handlebar. Right, we'll post a picture. Yeah, we'll post a picture on social media and maybe put up a Whoever put it up a vote. Gets a free always spent paid trip to the Tin Hat. As long as you're with on Jeremy's as long as you're dime. Two block radius already. Yeah. So anyway, so that's that about the history. Do you want to, uh, do we want to talk about what we are drinking? Yeah, totally, for sure. And you or do you want to do round two first? Well, you know, good point though. We already blazed through round one. And instead of talking about round one, which was noteworthy in itself, of course, we'll take a break, grab round two, and come back and talk about what you're drinking. All right, sounds, sounds good. good. Do Dance it. Pilgrims, take us out. Jeremy's going to do round one and two. Are we, uh, are we back? Yeah, we're not. Yeah. Back. All right, so we're, we're back for technically round two, but we didn't even talk about round one yet. So let's take it back a couple minutes uh, to round one for what we're drinking. Um, I know it's, it's gone and away from the table, so I have to remember, but I'm pretty sure it was the Bainbridge Island Windfall IPA. 
But before we go around the table talk about what you're drinking, I think it's noteworthy that what's on draft in the tin hat is the tin hat is pretty pretty unique. Pretty unique. Do you guys have uh, an idea of why the draft is the tin hat is what I believe is the first any of the dive bars we know is? No, actually I didn't pick up anything. I didn't. I didn't see. It looked like a row of tap handles. Yeah. There was like eight or nine of them, plus a cider. Um, did not notice anything different. Well, you're, you're halfway there, right? We had uh, we had uh, eight taps, all of which are beer plus one cider. There's one thing missing that has been on just about every bar we have visited. Ooh, ooh, ooh White Claw. No. No Rainier. No, no Rainier, but no more, dive even beer. Exactly. Even more Yeah. This is all craft. All craft all the time. That's weird. Highbrow. Highbrow. You wouldn't say this place is snooty, but from what you just described, it sounds kind of snooty. It's members only, so yeah. Well, they have so much Rainier and Oli stuff on the wall, it's kind of surprising. But I wonder if they normally do have Rainier, but because of the shortage, maybe that's why they don't have it. possible. Yeah, that's a good point, right? It's possible. But also, looking around, there's plenty of people drinking, like, I've seen a reindeer tall boy in the corner there. I've seen a Tecate in a can. Or it's oh, like, yeah. Tecate. This, this, this is not tecate. a snooty crowd. It's just what they choose to put on that. They save their taps. They save their cakes. They get stuff like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so this is a place that takes their beer seriously. Like whoever the guy is, it's like, why would I have Coors when I can have exactly. anything but and, Coors? Yeah, so would you say their uh, their selection that they do have is pretty well curated? It is. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So going down the list here, so instead of uh, like a lighter American style lager, like Rainier, Schlitz, or Pass or something, their lightest equivalents are their classic Northwest lager. Kasi Brewery, uh, micro, very high quality micro, but they make an excellent Northwest style, like a lighter style lager, like a Rainier or something. That's their you know, craft beer equivalent of it. That's the lightest you get. Yeah. Uh, anything on down is in Manny's Pale. Yeah. Very, very popular. A lot of the bad bars. Bodhisattva IPA, another one super popular. With about like half a place to be visited. Uh, a Fiend Pilsner. This is the second or third maybe type bar that had three months out. Used Bring to be like an crazy. inroads. You never had some free on tap. Right now, this is the third one we visited, so sign of the times, right? Yeah. Ruben's his delicious idea. Uh, I had my friend, one with that famous with Windfall IP, it's delicious. Black Raven, Complexer, Hazy Pale, get a couple of you guys. Yeah. Around, right? Yeah. And then to round it out, uh, some other cider on tap because this is particularly no place and you pretty much just want by law. Yeah. By law, you're right. So, anyway, that's off again. Curated a nice yeah. little tap list there. The only thing that would make it better is like you know a couple more on drafts. You know, add like four or five of them. <laughs> no, so, I had the uh, Black Raven Perplexer. At first, I thought it was a hazy IPA because that's all you yeah, see. Me too. So I said, "Give me the hazy," but it's not a hazy IPA. It's a hazy pale ale. It's a hazy pale ale. It's a lighter beer. It's a five it's three. Very, like, Hazy. Yeah. I yeah. loved it though. I did too. Yeah, it's I, a good, I thought it was great. It's lighter than it looks. It looks like a loaf of bread. It looks like the yeah. darkest jefe you've seen, like it super like a, cloudy. It's like a milkshake style. Yeah. yeah. But not quite. But it yeah. tastes like it's calories. Light and super flavorful. Yeah. It's probably some extra calories in there, but uh, I could use them. <laughs> I'll take it. There you go. You're right. Brad was cooling off. Do a little uh, Jamie, Jamie on the rocks. Jamie on the rocks. Excellent, excellent. I uh, went back to the Rubens Nation Delicious IPA. I, I tried that as Black Raven Hazy Pale. Effing delicious. It's really good. So I switched beers over to a Hazy IPA. And you know, um, Rubens I've had before. Hazy Delicious is truly as good as delicious. 
The tap handle for That's the Black really Raven good. was really cool too. I don't know if you guys noticed it. It had like antlers on it or something. Yeah. It was pretty wild. Black Ravens has some good tap. Great brewery. Yep, yep. Interesting creative Pagan yeah. idolatry. <laughs> Very nice. So we talked about the drink and we talked about what's the draft. Yeah. One thing we haven't talked a lot about in previous episodes is the audience should know, right? Shouldn't they know what the happy hour deals are? But uh, I, and we don't talk about it that often because happy hour deals aren't as commonplace as they once were. You know, I'd say a lot of places don't really have a happy hour, you know, which is unfortunate, Sad. you know. Well, hold on a second. It's going to... Hold on. I think Lou found out something about their $1 hot dog. Lou, <laughs> what, what wait, did you wait, find out there? Let's pass it over to Lou. I'm sorry, right? our listener, you missed some of the gold. I was bickering with prices with the uh, staff here because oh, the friendly apparently staff they're here. not the same as they were in Lou, 1970. Lou, time from 1970 and was thinking that they had $1 uh, hot dogs. No, do the shrink now in the year 2024, they do not have $1 hot dogs anymore. the words out of the bartender were like... Never had <laughs> yeah. time. Well, I don't know how long she's been here. I, I, she's been I, here I'll, 87 I'll years. Steak. <laughs> okay, well, I thought mine might have been 2015, is I think when this thing came from. All right. I think our listener needs to do a little bit of research to prove you were wrong or right. All right. They still have 69 cent tacos on Tuesday. Don't 99 cent no. due to inflation. <laughs> and they believe the words were, we never. No, they, they didn't have 69 tacos. Lou would be the kind that would pull up with 69 cents exactly and change. Like, <laughs> and put it out on the, the counter. Cents. Yeah. Okay, it was a bank. <laughs> I just want to taste the cabbage. I'm going to take my business elsewhere. <laughs> Uh, oh, well, okay. So, so uh, Bob, you're a big Debbie Downer there with like no happy hour specials because I am also old school and old and appreciate smoking happy hour deals. Yeah, I want I, w- I want a two dollar cheeseburger and a dollar beer, and then I want to leave a two dollar tip and I'm out the door. Yeah. No. What's the happy hour situation here? Is there one? So you come in for the non existent yeah. hot dogs, but you stay for the six cents. Oh, you might get a $2 only. hot dog if you're lucky. Yeah, come here with a $20 bill in your wallet, Lou. Don't, not a, not $1, but at least $20. If you're hoping well, that to get was some cute. Food. We call those yuppie food stamps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bob is protesting the fact that, like, it is an excellent beer selection on draft, but uh, more importantly, the menu is a little That's just in general. Yeah. Our deal prices, you know, in my opinion. But, uh, I heard they had some Soylent Green on Happy Hour here. It's Soylent Yellow. Yeah. I do, and Soylent Blue. Oh, here it is, the world-famous Flatliner. Oh, Flatliner? With a name like Flatliner. That's the tater tot thing that we were all oh. talking about. That's what they call it, the Flatliner. Okay. Yeah. Read the menu there, man. Well, it's basically like tater tots nacho style. So it's uh, tater tots covered in cheddar and jack cheese, bacon, bell peppers, tomatoes, onions, and sour cream. The kitchen sink. Yeah. And yeah. gravy, right? Can you, can you option uh, it doesn't because... say anything about any gravy. When I was a kid, there was gravy on them entertainers. I think you're talking about the uh, poteen, right? Yeah. No, it's not, it's not poteen. That's oh, our okay. friends from well, north of the border. When we get to where we're at, I'm going to read all this do, stuff do verbatim and preview you all know. Canadian audience? Is that, is that the <laughs> I think we're killing in Montreal last time yeah, I checked. Yeah. Shout out to the Canadians. <laughs> So we're all going to uh, pool our money together because it's a little on the pricey side and get the flatliner, which is going to be like a mountain of uh-huh. God knows what. And uh, I'm adding some my actual jalapenos. Yes. yes. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> what is the worst that can happen? We're not going to go there. More heart attacks. <laughs> well, I think we should discuss Uh-oh. where are we at. Lou. Lou. Where are now, we at? Now, this brings us back to the intro, right? Right. I introduced the Tin Hat Bar in Ballard and or Finney Ridge. So, Lou, you might have to settle a debate. Like, where 
exactly the hell are we? Which one is it? Well, we're going to get to that in a second because I got something else. It's time for our listeners' favorite sub segment, The Word on the Street. Saints Pilgrims, hit me with the Word on the Streets music. This is from The Stranger, The Authority. Oh, oh. The Tin Hat's only goal is to achieve the ideal for a certain type of barness, and that it does exceedingly well. Hot dogs are always a dollar. Pinball is Never free on Mondays. The place's piece de resistance is the flatliner. Fries covered in cheese, covered in bacon bits, covered in gravy. This is not your organic, locally sourced snack, but in this, these ingredients achieve majesty. The Tin Hat is great. That's an awesome review. Yeah. 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 That sums it up pretty good, actually. Yeah. Local and the 69 cent tacos are still real, right? No. 99 cent tacos. No. Well, I think we're Lou's going to be pulling out of McDonald's going, I'd like your 39 cent cheeseburger and 15 we, cent fries, please. We clearly need a follow up on whether $1 hot dogs ever existed. We, <laughs> okay. we need verifiable proof. Well, this one's from March. Emma G says, when you hear that there's a place that has cheap tacos on Taco Tuesday, you listen. When you hear that each taco is only 99 cents, oh, hell. you ask where. Also, best tots in Seattle, super friendly service, and a low-key vibe. I hope this spot stays in the neighborhood forever. Mm-hmm. All right, one more. I mean, how can you not give a five-star review when they were playing The Shining on the TV behind the bar and I saw a bedazzler on display? <laughs> what, like a new commercial during The Shining? Yeah. For a young wow. listener, a bedazzler is a, a, looks like a stapler, and it's used to staple rhinestones and shiny things and studs. To I close. remember that, yeah. More importantly, it's injected into the middle of The Shining. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. So, yeah, but you asked originally, where are we at at? Where are we at? Um, we're at Finney Ridge. Across the street is Ballard. Oh, you heard it. You heard it. Finny, Finny Ridge. Okay, so Finny Ridge. I'd say well, we're across in the shadow. The shadow. Across the street, shadow. that way, going yeah. uh, Like south? on the Goodwill side. Okay. Yeah, that's why we call it Tumbletown, Bob. Okay. Because there's a bacon lot across the street with the words Tumbletown on it. You go to Finny Ridge, you tumble down the hill in the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've done that many a time. Well, hey, now. Sounds. sounds like a Tuesday night. So yeah, so as far as where we're at technically, since we're in Finney Ridge, we already kind of covered it with our Sully Snow Goose episode, yeah, right? Around the corner. right? Okay. Yeah, shout out to Sully's, yeah, right up, right up on the hill. Our zoo episode. I encourage our listener to check that out to learn all things Guy Finney Ridge and Tusco and the rampaging elephants, and Bongo the Grouchy Gorilla raised as a human. Uh, Classic story. Yeah, uh, good stuff in there. So also where we're at. We're across the street from the Ballard Goodwill. One of the is, is better but Goodwills in, in the city, I will say that. Yeah, uh, yeah I think they're open until like 9 for shopping. Dude, they, that place drop off and stuff. over there. The yeah, they're still in operation. Because they closed down a number of times temporarily and then reopened. They've done that like maybe three or four times over the years. Hmm. They closed down and you like go to the door and it's locked. And then like three weeks later, oh, they're open. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's my neighborhood one. I've just dropped off tons and tons of stuff there, but I haven't really had the good find. But like, there's a guy at work. He's he's got a great eye. He's a fashionable dude. And a couple times I've complimented him on these killer sport coats he was wearing. And each time he's like, "Oh, Goodwill, twenty five bucks." So we think like, where's all the good stuff when I'm in Goodwill? <laughs> it's like a skill, right? It is a skill. You gotta have the to right eye for it. Treasure yeah. hunter, yeah. like you gotta be able to yeah. sniff it out. Smell yeah. out the Brooks Brothers. Yeah. So what about you guys? Do you have any gold Goodwill finds? Well, Brad, you're kind of, you're a picker of the. You're not gonna find old Seattle stuff at a Goodwill. No, the kind of stuff that I'm out looking for, yeah, you usually don't find in Goodwill or any, any place like that. But I mean, I've certainly scored some cool like clothes and stuff like that at Goodwill over the years. So yeah, I'm no stranger. Nice, J Dog. What well, you found some gold there. Oh yeah, many times. I got like lots of Goodwill. But mine are kind of nerdy because a lot of the shit that I found super smoking, uh, it's like sports, 
building, like out of the cycles and snowboarder, right? So I found like pristine, brand new, like never worn high end cycling shoes, which are two, three, four hundred bucks normally. Ten bars, right? And I've got multiple, right? Like I probably have like three or four real high end nice cycling shoes at home. Like I got my Right on. On the snowboarding side, I've got not one, but two, like actively brand new, maybe one or two season old snowboards for like 20, 30 bucks. Right, <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Same thing with like boots and bindings. I found like um, bindings, like literally never worn from clearance from some sporting goods store or whatever. Boots that are like you know, used, right? But maybe worn very, very little. They look practically brand new, like 10 bucks or whatever. You know, of course, like, do they fit you? Are they the right size? Yes, I'm oh, smart, right? So, lots of awesome, awesome sporting gear over the years. So, you made some true scores there. It sounds oh, like, yeah. yeah. That's a hot tip for our listeners. I don't want you guys to pinch on Jeremy's traps, but uh, <laughs> sporting goods well, is stuff can be scored. Yeah, and, and you know, count, count the days, right? Because it's like a lot of those deals we're talking about. It's like, really, as soon as they get the word kind of gets out, it's like, oh, man, those, those days are gone, right? Like, so, you know, find it like super kind of suits and stuff, whatever. And, you know, like, you know, electronics, I'm kind of like electronics, not a nerd, yeah. computers and stuff. Like, it used to be like, you know, like, well, because when they get it, they used to not know what it was worth, and then the internet helped everyone. It helped them make money as well. They, they just, put it up for auction online, or, or they just research what it is before they put it out. Before they just yeah. used to put it out. What does that look like? I don't know. Five bucks. I don't know what the hell it is. Yeah, five bucks. And then you see that's fucking five hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah, well, Goodwill does have their own online auctions oh, yeah. now, and that, like you're saying, they screen for the good stuff. Yeah, they know and what they're doing. And they put it up online, they and people bid doing. for it. Yep. So that's uh, really that, 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 like that's the logic of the modern Goodwill deal. Deal is like, what can you find? That slips that through the cracks. That slips through the cracks. Yeah. The people at Goodwill are like, yeah, whatever, five bucks. And they thought they didn't realize what the, the diamond and uh, yep. like, that skipped the. Uh, Still there, just more elusive. Yeah. yeah. Well, out in the picking world, there are guys, and their whole thing is they go out and they find, like, silver and gold, like, you know, old silverware and stuff. Well, that's my dad and Greg, man. Yeah, looking for stuff. And, you know, people Ooh, sell stuff at garage sales and stuff. They don't realize it's silver. It's handed down from their grandparents yep. or whatever. They're, well, we don't want the stuff anymore. And yep. it's, like, sterling and silver. Yep. And Goodwill is another place where they go to find yep. stuff like that. And they do. Yep. Because I've talked to a few of them. My dad used to hit the one on 4th or the Salvation Army or whatever. Oh, but, yeah, yeah that, he used to score down there back in the 90s. You know, he's like, honey, yep. look at this. They don't even know what they got, you know. Like a sterling bucks, silver. And he's walking out with ounces of Serving sterling. tray, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what, I I think, I think we need a, a dive bar podcast spinoff where we hit Goodwills. You know the, the, the local uh, thrift shops in Seattle, which is another kind of town to breathe. Like they used to be all over the damn place. They are they are shutting down left and right. Well, the marketplace has just it just can't exist anymore within the marketplace. It's kind it's of tough, uh, yeah, it's still tough. Around, and yeah. And Goodwill is subsidized at least, so they'll shout always out be to around. Pioneer Square Bond Voyage Vintage. Oh, hell say what's yes. up to cool friends Keith. of the podcast, friend of the podcast. Yeah, and then have a beverage over there at the Meyer, That's right, right, next, right next, door. next door. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Abe, shout out to Abe out, friend of the podcast. Yeah. So yeah, since we're wow, what was this the commercial break? What the hell? <laughs> that was a commercial break. Wow, you got to adjust your brain, Jeremy. Took a Jeremy. sharp fast. detour there. <laughs> All right, so let's finish it up. Where, where, where are we at? Where, where the hell are we? At? We're, we're taking it into the finish line. We're going to finish it up with another word on the streets. This is word on the streets. Uh, stand down, Saints programs. You have to play the theme song twice. Word to your mother. Oh, we're working too hard. Okay, this is about uh, Seattle Goodwills. Vicious Dino says, I've always found the Shoreline Goodwill, Jeremy, this will mean something to you. I've always found the Shoreline Goodwill to be the most enjoyable one in the immediate area. Less picked over, more treasures, big building, chill vibe. But of course, now all the Goodwills skim the best things off and sell them online, so... Well... Shout out to the Shoreline Goodwill. Still a damn good Goodwill. Yeah? I find deals to this day. Nice. No, actually, no, edit that out. I don't want the brick hit. Yeah. That good one sucks. Come on, guys, all the fucking bars. Okay. Well, Baron Von Kludge counters that. The Shoreline Goodwill's crap. It's actually the most expensive thrift store anywhere around right now. 
I was in there a few days ago and they were selling a bag of popsicle sticks for $6. I could have gone across the street to QFC, bought a bag of popsicles, enjoyed those, and still had more popsicle sticks for less money. He's 100% correct. Do not go to that Goodwill. Also, don't buy Do food buy items Goodwill. from a said thrift store. I don't know why, you, why you're shopping. You know. But hold on a second. They, they were literally <laughs> selling popsicle, popsicle sticks for $6. Six dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you buy it for your kid for an art project. Yeah, something. yeah. Six bucks for a bag of popsicle sticks. Huh, okay. So don't go there. Sticks. Jeremy popsicle hates that place. Uh, Brad, this is going to be important to you. Uh, All right. Fluffy Camaro has this to say about uh, your neighborhood Goodwill. I only go to the Edmund, Edmunds one. It smells better than regular Goodwills, and I tend to find better clothes. Rich people drop off not some nice shit there. Uh, I would agree with that. Okay. Goodwill one is kind of ritzy. Yeah, I would say it's the, the Edmunds you side of Goodwills. I don't go there enough to really care. We're going to cut it. We'll cut this song. Yeah, yeah, Brad's going through some guy's garage looking for some old papers under the That's table. where the real steals are that's, now. Yeah. That's the last place you want to get a fine is a garage sale because from old old timer who really don't know what he has, yep. and it's a quarter. And you're like, yeah. nothing's a quarter. Garage sale podcast? Huh? I mean, that's a, garage sales? that's a thing. That's a thing. What? That's nice. a thing. I'm not saying no. I think we need, we need a poll. We need, we need a Facebook or Instagram poll. All of our listeners can go in and vote. Uh, yeah, that'll be cutting into loo time, though. I don't want to be uh, going to garage sales on the weekend. It's a Formula One time. All right. I got one more, and this is a good one, because this is uh, downtown, the Soto uh, outlet. Dink87 says, if you've never been to Goodwill in Soto, it's an experience. <laughs> So much stuff that you buy clothes by the pound. Wear a mask for the dust and gloves for the occasional rat. You've been warned. Yeah. I think that's also referred to as the bins, isn't it? Or yeah. No? Yeah. yeah. The outlet. That, that review is, is accurate, but also why it's so uncool. Well, that's part of town. <laughs> so digging. You go to Airport so Way awesome. and right on the yeah, right in the shadow of Chinatown. Watch out, you know. Yeah. There you go. All right, I got two more. This one's from Sierra Scott. Bellevue Goodwill is, comes always comes through when I need power strips and extension cords. I could see that. Okay. All right. I, I, I hope the I hope the last one you got is either uh, White Center or Capitol Hill. What do you got? What do you got? Uh, the period. one in uh, Soto, not the outlet, but okay. the one on Southland Street. The Southland Goodwill. This is from Serena Apia. I should give her a shout out. The Southland Goodwill off Dearborn rocks. Have you ever seen a thrift store that saw, sorted all of its sweaters by color? This place has their act together. The book selection is like walking into Borders. The furniture section is massive. A little more pricey than practically free at other stores, but you can put this on your to-do list. You won't be disappointed. So get out there, listener. Okay. Check out some Goodwills. Hey, and while the you're down there, not the one in Shoreline. For, for you and your AV Pops needs, check out RePC. Sure, you've been right, right down, right behind them. So, while we're down there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I won't mention them again until I pass, but so I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> All right. So, you get to think more about like where the where the F we actually F are. Finney Ridge. Oh, Finney Ridge. Ballard's across the street. Okay, got it. Yeah. Stamp on it. Yeah. Go build right over there. <laughs> <laughs> are we ready to land this plane, or? I think we are. Okay. I think we just ended up in the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> let's, let's do it. Let's, let's wrap it up. All right. Uh, thanks, thanks, everyone, for listening. j -Dog. Another episode. Uh, go to the socials, our Instagram, Facebook, X. So like, subscribe. TikTok channel coming soon, right? No? Yes? No? Maybe? Yeah? Fun? Yeah? I, no. I assume so. No. Let's hope. Okay. Fingers crossed. Kind of yeah. No guarantees. TikTok might be gone Pending. for all we know. Pending. Yeah, that's true. Might be banned next month. Might be might banned. banned. Yeah. Okay, so like, like yeah, let's get off that train. Smog, you know, smog, kind of stuff on all the actual socials that exist. Especially me to Facebook. And we'll see you next time. Everybody. All right, cheers. 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 Dim lights out.